Hello everyone and welcome to a special edition of the I Work and Sport live interview. This week we'll, uh, it will be the Meet the Programs week. Uh, that's a series of live interviews in which a selection of our academic partners will be presenting their courses and answering your questions. Um, so those are programs that will be at the upcoming Educational Virtual Expo. You just saw the ad that happens in uh, next week from the 6th to the 8th of uh, April. So there you go. You can see that there. Um, if you haven't done so, just uh, you can register for free. There's a, the link in the description. So you will be meeting many of the best sports uh, management uh, masters um, in sport. So my name is uh, Jean Frigerio. I'm the founder of I Work in Sport, right? So uh, if you don't know I Work in Sport yet, we are a platform uh, made to help you boost your career in sport. We connect talents and recruiters, uh, especially, but not only our uh, series of events, while we also promote career growth and education always in sport. Here's the link, uh, iworkinsport.com. Otherwise, you can find us here, uh, yeah, in all these uh, social media channels, at iworkinsport, pretty much everywhere. So thank you uh, for uh, being with us today. It would be great if you can let us know where you're watching from. You know, say hello, don't be shy. Prepare uh, to send your questions. Um, yeah, so yeah, let us know where you are. As I as I said, if you can, you know, hit that like button. It will be super helpful as well. And uh, let me introduce my guest, the first guest of the week. We're going to be talking to the professor Babatunde Buraimon. He's a senior lecturer in sports management and economics and director of studies at the Football Industries MBA, the FIMBA, at the University of Liverpool. So uh, he and his team will be at the Education Virtual Expo next week. Uh, but this is a chance for everyone uh, to get to know the university and the sports programs offered by university better uh, even before the event. So I'm really looking forward to the chat. So let's get to that. I'm going to welcome him in. Hello, Tunde, how are you? Not bad. Hello, Joe. How are you? I'm doing very well. Very well. Thank you. Let me just see already. I think there's uh, some comments uh, coming in. And we'll acknowledge them uh, in a minute. Um, if you haven't said hello yet, please do so. Tunde, so you're in Liverpool? Well, where you live or? Because no, I can see your, your home. At the moment, I'm working from home. So obviously, you know, the um, the pandemic has had uh, a significant impact on uh, on everyone, really. So students, staff, uh, and the way we work, really. So, uh, you know, the campus has been in uh, in a bit of a lockdown. Obviously, the, U the UK uh, has been going in a series of lockdown, and that's affected universities. So much of our teaching had to transition to online. Uh, which we've done a pretty good job of, and, and our students have really benefited from from how we've gone about things. So, uh, for, we're so going to talk course. about that more specifically. How you transition to to online in 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 one second? Okay. Um, but um, actually, before we we start talking about that, before we enter and what you're offering, how you're handling the the pandemic and, and, and all that. Um, Tell us a, a little bit uh, about you. I just sort of gave uh, your title, 
let us know a little about your career and how you started working and specifically uh, in sport. Okay, well, um, as as you know, I uh, as you introduced, I am the director of studies for the uh, football industries MBA at uh, the University of Liverpool, and I've been in that role now for since 2014, and it's been such a brilliant, um, uh, enjoyable role to be involved in, and working with some brilliant students who've um, you know uh, you know worked with us on campus. And uh, but before that, I, I actually did my um, uh, doctoral degree in economics, sports economics at the University of Lancaster. And I've always been uh, a big um, fan of how management and economics in particular can be used to inform decision making in sports. So uh, I've published a lot of papers looking at uh, the economics of football in particular, uh, looking at the broadcast market, which is a, an area which I specialised in looking at sports rights, television audiences. Um, so what's fantastic uh, about that now is I, I work with a group of colleagues who are also uh, sharing that expertise and, and complement that. So yeah, so I, I've been um, been involved in sports research for quite some time. And a fantastic part of my job as well is that I also get to work with some uh, very uh, important organisations in the sports industry. So on the one hand, I publish uh, sports research, but on the other hand as well, I also get to see how that research influences decisions made by organizations and actually work with those organizations to actually improve what they do, the welfare of their, their customers and, and generally improve sports policy. Right, uh, that's great. And Tell us, before we get to more sort of in-depth questions about uh, the sports programs that you run there, tell us a little bit more about the University of Liverpool. Well, the University of Liverpool is, um, for, for those who, uh, I mean, many people probably would have heard of Liverpool, no doubt, um, courtesy of, uh, of its football team, but the University of Liverpool is also a well-established university in, in the United Kingdom and globally. It's often referred to as the original Red Brick University. Um, and that that pretty much you know, um, emphasizes its status as one of the leading universities, uh, not just in the UK, but globally as well. Um, it's referred to, it's a member of the Russell Group of Universities. So this is an elite group of universities in the UK, which is driven by its research and the quality of its research is is, is globally renowned, really. So the university is, is a fantastic university to, to be at. And as I said, you know, world-renowned for its research as well as its teaching as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm privileged to, to be working at the University of Liverpool and I, I'm enjoying uh, my moments there. Great. Thank you for that, um, Tunde. Um, let me just uh, say hi to some people that are leaving messages here. We have Ashim uh, watching from New Delhi in India. Barnabas is in Hungary. Capetu, uh, so Brenda Kunde is in Zambia. Uh, we have Erica here in Lausanne. Hello, Erica. And Ali uh, in Lebanon. So for you that are joining now, don't forget to let us know where you're watching from. Uh, Tunde, so what are the programs that will be featured at the Education Virtual Expo next week? Well, next week we'll be featuring the Football Industries MBA program, which, um, as I said, I am the Director of Studies for, but also as well um, our sister program, which is the Thoroughbred Horse Racing Industries uh, MBA program, will also be featuring as well. And, um, and these two programs are... Uh, are um, quite a unique um, program to, to the University of Liverpool. Uh, first and foremost, it reflects um, our expertise in sports, really. And if you are familiar with Liverpool, um, it's synonymous with horse racing, it's synonymous with football, and that's reflected in these two programmes that I, I'm talking about. Um, but also another unique uh, feature of the two programmes as well is the actual level. So the, the programs which we'll be featuring are, are MBA programs, so Masters of Business Administration. So 
the caliber of students that we normally get on these programs are students who graduated uh, from their degrees, whether that be bachelor's or, or, or master's degrees, but they've gone on to work in industry. So they've got um, a number of years of industry experience. And, but many of them are looking for perhaps a career change. And for the students I have on, my, on the Football Industries MBA program, one thing that really does connect them is their drive and ambition to work in the football industry. Um, and right. that could be uh, that various parts of that. So these are the two programs that we'll be featuring at the uh, uh, live um, uh, at, the, at the fair. Cool. Yeah, I was uh, very familiar with the Football Industries MBA for many years. I just heard of the Thoroughbred, um, the, sorry, the, the oh, horse racing. racing. Yeah. Yes, the horse racing um, masters. I think last year when you uh, showcased that at uh, the, the previous Education Virtual Expo, but tell us a little bit more about uh, those courses. So for how long you've been running them? Um, and uh, what's the size of, of the classes? How international are they? Is that uh, do you have men and women doing both? Give us a little more information about each of those two courses. Yeah, so just, just by way of a, a bit of flavor. So the Football Industries program has, is something that's been running at Liverpool for you know, well over 20 years now. And it's a real... Um, you know, dual in, in, in our crown, really, in terms of our postgraduate programs, but also our our sports program as well. So as I said, it's been running for over 20 years. And we've had, uh, you know, we've got alumni who are, you know, all over the, the globe, really, who graduated from the program and, uh, you know, have gone on to make some great things um, in, in the industry. So that's we our... Have uh, we have interviewed a few here. Oh yeah, in fact, yeah, you know um, that, that's a great thing about uh, the FIMBA program. The the students and the alumni are, are very well connected, so it's a real pleasure to see them graduate uh, from the program and then go on to do some some wonderful things. So, as I said, the football industry program has been something that we've been running for quite some some years now. In fact, it's actually older than the business school, the management school in which it, it is now uh, hosted in, and. Um, wow. So, uh, yeah, it's got a real legacy and a real heritage, really. And, you know, when you mention FIMBA, people who are familiar with postgraduate sports programmes immediately connect with, you know, FIMBA and, and Liverpool. Um, but a few years ago, we, you know, on the back of, again, the quality of our, our talk programmes and our research, we were approached by the horse racing industry to also offer an MBA program in uh, thoroughbred horse racing. Um, and again, this is a competitive process that we had to go through, uh, but please say we, we did win that uh, process. Again, on the back of the quality of research that we offer at, at the university. So um, the horse racing MBA program is uh, a lot younger. I think it's in its third or fourth year of operations. And um, that program is part-time, so it's really, um, focuses on executives from within the industry, although we do also admit um, candidates from outside industry who are looking to transition into horse racing. But the majority of the students we do get are students who are from within the industry who are actually looking to upskill, um, you know, their, their, uh, improve their CVs, um, develop new skills and hopefully uh, elevate their, their way up uh, throughout, through the industry. So, that, so those are the, the two programs there, and hopefully a, a nice flavor of what they're about. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. Uh, before we continue, let me just, uh, again, say, say hi to some people that are uh, leaving messages here. So Ali is uh, watching from Lebanon. Camila is in Peru. Thank you for uh, watching, Lutendo. Uh, is in South Africa, jo Joburg. In, in fact, um, ja, it, it's, it's quite interesting the, the, the names and the places that you're reading out because to a certain extent, it actually reflects the, the, the wide audience that we get uh, for our programs as well. So on the Football Industries program, it, it is a very, very broad international mix. So we have students from Africa, uh, from South America, North America, 
from Asia, Europe, uh, a few from England. So it's a real, really brilliant mix. And so not only do we get students who have fantastic experience because they've been in industry for at least three years, but we also get students who have, you know, who are culturally diverse, really. So um, th the students really do get to tap into uh, the, the, the different cultures, the different expertise, uh, and all, you know, uh, within a 12-month uh, calendar year, you know, just learning fantastically from each other. So it's, it's really fantastic. So I think the, the, the names and the places that you're reading out is, is yeah. a nice reflection of the, of the students that we attract to the program as well. Yeah, 100 percent. That's uh, one of the cool things about uh, us here. This uh, I work in sport, um, this community that uh, comes and joins us. Uh, we speak for uh, to people all over the world, really. So Shorty, who I showed, is in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Tomas is in Colombia. And yeah, I mean, it's um, our, our audience is so international and so are the our partners, our academic programs uh, that uh, are partner with us, uh, such as uh, the University of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, tell, you, you were mentioning uh, before, and I kind of interrupted you because I wanted to, to do that introduction about university and about yourself first. But let's go back then to how you managed, you know, these uh, difficult times uh, during COVID. Uh, you mentioned that now, of course, you have many of your students uh, studying from home. Mm -hmm. I think there was probably a period uh, where they were in class. So how are you managing that? And what people there are thinking of uh, applying for your programs in the future should expect? Well, um, I, I just, as you said, um, you know, obviously the pandemic has been quite um, disruptive. Um, uh, and we shouldn't forget really that, you know, it's, um, you know, whilst it's been disruptive uh, to the way of work and the way of learning, um, you know, we should probably spare a thought for those who the pandemic has had a, a serious impact on really. Um, you know, there's probably a chance now that we probably know someone who the pandemic has affected severely. Fian Patrick. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so, um, but in terms of what we've been able to do, we've obviously, mo most of our classes, all of them in fact, have moved online so that was a very quick transition that affects those students who last graduated so the conclusion to their program uh, was, was online so the new intake that started with us in october um uh, 2020 they started online although some did actually make the trip to liverpool uh, looking to and hoping that we you know will they'll be able to do their classes um uh, in person and in fact we were actually ready to deliver in person on on you know we had a meeting on a friday we we're getting ready for the monday but then the uk government went into you know that first lockdown which did um you know uh, affect everyone that was back so, in september did you say yeah yeah sorry yeah back in october so in fact it was the, the second lockdown actually um so yeah that so we had to move things uh you know quickly back online so many of our students have been engaging in that, but you know the, the the quality of what my colleagues have been able to deliver has been you know second to none really. And speaking with the students, they they've been you know amazed by what we've been able to deliver. The only shame of it is that we haven't really been able to meet in person in the volume that we would have liked. So there's been a few classes that have taken place in person, uh, face to face, but the majority have been online. But having said that as well, it's it's also created opportunities. So uh, one of the flagship elements of, uh, of the programme is our guest speaker series and our interaction with industry. Yeah. And um, ordinarily, we will probably maybe have one or two uh, speakers from industry uh, coming onto campus per week to work with our students in masterclasses um, and, and, and facilitated sessions. Um, but Obviously, because that's not been possible, um, you know, they've been willing to engage in that and engage in that virtually. So rather than have maybe two speakers per week, there's been occasions where we've had three, um, you know, in fact, most cases we've had three, really. So the students have really had a chance to actually interact with industry, albeit online, but nevertheless, that interaction is 
extremely important. And, uh, you know, we've created that that uh, platform, that process. And, um, yeah, so it's really, really worked quite well. Um, in terms of the future, um, fingers crossed, I think probably an element of luck involved as well as planning. But fingers crossed when we do get to September 21, uh, or in fact, before then, hopefully, um, you know, the global, uh, you know, the, 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 the global market will be open for business, people can travel, um, and, and we'll be able to actually start to conduct our, our work in, in person. And in fact, uh, you know, I work in sport probably mirrors some of those, those challenges as well, because uh, one of the, um, you know, biggest points in the calendar for us actually is some of our international trips, which include trips to FIFA, uh, to FIFA in the past, UEFA as well, but also Lausanne as well, where the students have come to the I work in sports job fair as well. But I remember, again, when the pandemic hit, that's something that, you know, um, in fact, you're one of the key leaders in there in having to move from an in-person live event to something that uh, had to be delivered um, virtually as well. So, yeah, you know, we, you know, the, you know, the whole sectors had to make some interesting um, strides and transitions from face to face to online. But, you know, we 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 do we, we try and make the best of it really but hopefully um in september 21 september october 21 um you know we'll be back in on campus back in the classroom uh, doing what we do best yeah hopefully yes you're right um as you said the, the same thing i think the the pandemic brings um, many challenges and it sucks not being able to meet in person uh, here in lausanne but then we'll also try to, you know, use the uh, yeah technology to our to our advantage, and hopefully to bring more companies to to participate from from areas of the world where they probably wouldn't come. Uh, so make as international as possible. So uh, just going back uh, about the the two courses, they're both uh, is that one year long. Uh, they start one year and, and finish the the. They start in October and finish in July. Uh, or is that the same for for the uh, FIMBA and the horse racing master? Well, for the football industries, that's uh, in fact we have uh, variants of that. So we have the uh, full time program. So that's uh, obviously our flagship program, and that starts in September October, uh, normally the back end of September, and that runs for twelve calendar months. Um, so the students are are with us for those months they do uh, significant parts of the talk program and then they then move on to either do the dissertation or the work-based project which takes place in the summer months and that then takes the students to mid-september where they conclude their uh, the, the, the program so football industries full-time is is uh, 12 months but we also have part-time um, candidates as well on the football industries program as well and these students would normally take um, um, two years to complete their part-time studies as well. And um, right. one of the things we make sure we do is we integrate the part-time students with our full-time students. So they do do their modules together. That's extremely important. Um, right. Um, so we, we take advantage of that. So, um, uh, but yeah, they, they take 24 months to complete their program. Now mm -hmm. for the horse racing industries program that's uh, that's part-time at the moment so that's a two-year uh, part-time program so similar with the football industries part-time students they take right. 24 months to complete that and what are the size of the classes well it ranges so for the full-time um, program we normally have anywhere between 25 and 35 students um, and then how many are international Oh, well, um, in terms of international, probably looking at the majority of them, really. So we're probably, so in a class size of 30, maybe 25 plus will be international. So it, it is truly an international div diverse program, really. And that's something that we're, we're, we're very proud of. So, yeah, so we, we normally have between 25 and 35 students on the um, on the uh, full-time program. We keep those numbers that way because of the quality of experience that we're trying to deliver. 
Um, you know, we get quite a number of applicants, which again, we're, we're quite pleased about, but we're able to make sure we select those applicants which we think are, are, are excellent. Uh, those applicants who have um, the ability to benefit from the program. Um, but also we try and keep it to a very manageable number so that the experiences and the quality of the experiences is, is truly maintained. That's great. Thank you. Uh, by the way, let me just uh, remind everyone that is watching now, if you have your own questions, want to know anything in particular about uh, both uh, programs uh, or sports management programs that are offered by the University of Liverpool, don't be shy. Just leave your, your question or your comment here. And uh, yeah, we'll be sure that uh, we'll address them. Uh, Tunde, we are mentioning, we're talking about the, the, your industry links. Mm. And you said that now you even have more guest speakers than, than before. But uh, give us a better sense of how strong those links are. Well, it's, um, it's incredibly important to us because um, one of the, the biggest beliefs we have is that the students we, we have on the program, obviously they want they, their ambition is to work in football at a medium to, to senior level. Um, so they really need to understand the industry. So hence those industry links are, are extremely important for us. Um, on a number of levels, um, firstly, we involve industry by actually working, they, they come and work with, present to our students, run masterclasses with our students. So for example, um, a typical Friday, we may have say, um, the CEOs of say Liverpool Football Club and Brighton uh, and Hove Football Club come in to, to work and speak to our students. Um, and it gives them a flavor of what's involved at that level of football. So what does it mean to be a CEO of a, a global football club? What does it mean to be the CEO of a of a football club, perhaps whose market is slightly more, uh, you know, regional or, or national? So they get a, a sense and a flavour of that. Um, we also work uh, and bring guest speakers from the broadcast industry in as well. Obviously, when we talk about football and broadcasting, is an, a very important element of that. So again, students get a, a sense of how that broadcast market works. And what's brilliant about it is that. Um, often when we do talk about football, sometimes the mind and the focus tends to be on the football clubs and the federations. And what people don't often appreciate is the, the wider football network and the wider football sector that there is really. So we have students who, in their mind, would always like to work for, with or for a football club. But it's only when they start the programme that they realise that there are so many different sectors that they haven't really considered then that they're quite equipped to work in so they, they then broaden their horizon and, and they look at that so that comes through the guest speakers um that, that we that we work with and the guests who come and work with and speak to our students and again things like the i work in sports uh, fair is important to that uh, for that as well because again the students get a feel for you know the, the wider sports industry so um, in fact, we've had students who finished their football industries program, but they've gone on to work in sports, not not necessarily football per se, really. So, again, it's important to give them that that, that element. The other part, which I also think is important, which gives us credence, credibility, and legitimacy, is the type of work that we do with industry as well. So, we do research on behalf of the football and the, the wider sports industry. Um, we offer advice to various government departments, both in the UK and in Europe. So the, 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 the nature of the research that we do is, is something that we feel is influencing what's happening in the industry, uh, influencing decisions within, the, within the, the football and the broader sports market. And again, that's something which the students can learn and do learn from. So, um, so it's really important to be industry connected, uh, yeah. and so the students can benefit from that. So these aren't just you know, theoretical exercises in classes; these are real life um, events, really. Cool. Listen, you touched. Um, we have a question here from Ashim Garg, uh, I think in New Delhi, right? 
and uh, yeah, so he's been through the course curriculum, but I wanted to know uh, more about uh, how the program help in lending sort of work opportunities. Uh, examples will be helpful. And I think you were mentioning that uh, the, the students go um, not only to football clubs or football federations. Um, I mean, we had uh, Misha Cher not uh, too long ago here at uh, Mediacom. Of course, Paul Brighton, that is, was... Uh, last week, we had um, the CEO of SoccerX, who had okay. many people uh, going from the Liverpool Football MBA there mm -hmm. and then doing their, their own thing. So Paul Brighton is one that has his own uh, uh, agent uh, business with Entourage Sports. Uh, he's participated in one of our events as well. Um, good friends with uh, Felipe at uh, FCDS Media in, in South America. So in agencies, not only football clubs, but you have sort of I think statistics, uh, more or less, you have an idea when people graduate, how long maybe it takes for them sort of to get uh, a job or where do they go mostly? Um, and yeah, yes, and if you could give a few other examples of how you support them with that as uh, Ashim asked. Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, we're quite pleased that, um, all, I say the I say all, if you know, certainly the majority of our students, once they graduate, they do go on to, to wonderful things. Um, you know, it, I, I think it'd be disingenuous of me to take all the credit or, or if any of the credits at all. I simply believe that, you know, the caliber of students that we do attract are, are driven, they're motivated. And, and part of what we try to, to do and work with them is maybe focus their, their attention, um, you know, their drive, um, and, and help them with that. So when not when these students do graduate, they, they've gone on to work. Um, many of them have gone on to work at football clubs. Um, some of these are some of the Premier League football clubs uh, in the in England. Some you know across the globe as well. Uh, remember that many of our students do come from you know all across the globe. So many of them do go back to their uh, countries. You know, looking to to make a difference to the football industries there so uh, some of our students do go to go on to work for and with football club some go on to work for football federations as well so we've had students who've gone on to work uh, for the likes of fifa and uefa and no doubt a few other uh, football federations globally as well um, we have some students who've set up their own business for example so uh, one recent graduate set up uh, Player Lens, which is remarkable and doing incredibly well. So this is a, a platform that allows football clubs to to uh, work with one another when they when they um, lend or, or, or loan players in, in the loan market. So they set up a, a, an entrepreneurship um, a business doing that. Um, we have some students who've gone on to do postgraduate studies, some working for media companies. Um, in fact, um, I, you know, I want to be cautious and not to, to mention names uh, because that's not, uh, you know, for, for data protection reasons. But we've had some students who've gone on to work for broadcasters, not just in football, but outside of football as well. But on the back of that, they've decided that, you know, they can actually uh, set up their own consultancy. So, you know, it's it's really fantastic to see the the sorts of work they've gone on to do. Uh, some have gone on to work for consultancy firms, the likes of Deloitte, KPMG. Um, so yeah, it, it's quite varied, really. And uh, but what's very pleasing is that many of the students, once they graduate, quickly go on to do these things. In fact, um, there's quite a few of them who actually get these opportunities way before they graduate, and and it's a case of trying to balance you know, the demands of a new job. We're trying to finish off their, their work-based project or dissertation. So, yeah, so the, the range of jobs uh, and what they're going to do is, um, is, is quite varied, really. A lot depends on the sorts of skills they have, really. So, um, you know, if some may want to work in, in the finance sector, some may want to work in legal. Uh, so if they can combine the FIMBA program with some of the knowledge, skills, and education that they've had previously, that obviously allows them to set, you know, a, a particular path that suits them. So, yeah, they, those are just some of the, the, the types of jobs and, and organizations that uh, our students have gone on to work with. 
Oh, thank, thank you, Tunde. Hashim, I hope that um, answers your question. If it doesn't, let us know, then we'll try to... <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I welcome any follow-ups as well. So. If, if better, and I see that there are more questions and comments uh, coming, we'll get to that in, in a second as well. So keep them coming. Um, so Tunde, talking about the assessments, so what are they like? So if I'm thinking already of applying um, to maybe a... Uh, yeah, okay. an opportunity well, there with you uh, at the University of Liverpool at the FIMBA uh, course, for instance. What will assessments uh, be like? Well, the feedback from the students is that they're hard. <laughs> they're really hard. But I guess that's nature of postgraduate study. And in particular, that's nature of MBA study as well. It's uh, it's a really hard process. But nevertheless, it's a rewarding process as well. Um, one of the things that we've 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 done with our assessment, and this is a feature of the University of Liverpool, is that we try to make our assessments authentic. Now, what do I mean by authentic? Well, it means that the type of assessment that you do on the FIMBA program are the types of um, work that you likely come across in the in uh, in the world of work, in, in, in essence, really. So. For example, you know, um, very rarely now do we have students actually sit, you know, traditional exams. Uh, so we've moved away from that. And students are actually doing the type of assessments that reflect what they will come across in work. So, for example, in some of the group work we do, we don't just have group presentations, which often is a, 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 a common mode um, at university, but we have, um, you know, um, simulations for example where students are given you know we, we take them to a football club they're given a, a simulation which involves a crisis management and they have to go away work on that report back so you know so for example it could well be that you know uh, a first team player has been involved in some misdemeanor and they've got to work go away put together press release to actually deal with that and no sooner do they deliver that more information comes in that this has also happened. So they've got to really work through that. And these are all based on real life, real life scenarios and cases. And in fact, in doing these type of assessments, we actually work with industry to actually do that. In another type of assessment we do, we have students actually work on contracts. So they take um, one side of a contract negotiation and they have a set time to reach a, an agreement. And if they don't reach an agreement in that set time, um, there are penalties that they do pay. And that again reflects the authentic nature of what happens in real life. So in that particular assessment, which students say they absolutely love, the clock's ticking down, they're still arguing, negotiating, a minute to go, can they reach an agreement? And so it's a real, um, authentic scenario really which uh, so that really reflects the type of assessments that we we do on the program we obviously have reports and essays and research that the students also uh, get involved in um, the students work with data because one of the one of the one of the biggest um i don't know you might say it's an evolution you might say it's a revolution in sport anyway is, is data there's more and more data now being made available, whether that be plain data, whether that be commercial data. And it's very relevant for students to actually be able to um, understand data, um, analyze data and use that to make, um, you know, hopefully informed decisions. So again, that's something that influences what we do. So one of the things we, we really do is have varied assessment. That assessment is authentic and a reflection of um, reality and uh, and quite challenging as well so you know this is not easy by any stretch it, it does stretch our student it challenges them so that hopefully when they do go into the world of employment um, they're, they're, they're set and they're ready right right thanks uh, thanks for that there's a few more questions coming in so Tomas Posada uh, wants to know if I do not have work experience can i apply for this master and what are the types of financing um, so peter 
uh, from the Philippines also asks if there's scholarship uh, given opportunities. Okay, so let's take those questions in uh, in order. Uh, so on the matter of work experience, uh, experience is extremely important. So you know to to even be admitted or, or to the application considered for the program, you need at least three years of supervisory or managerial experience. It's just the nature of what MBA programs are about. That's extremely relevant to us because the management school is a triple accredited management school. So we we have a number of accreditations globally, which means that we're, we're one of the top management schools in the world, really. And part and parcel of maintaining that level of excellence is also based on the quality of the students that we admit. So we unfortunately cannot compromise on the quality and the caliber of the experience that our students, that the applicants present to us. So experience is, is, is an important element of that. And for any for most MBA programs of, of quality and of note, experience will, is, is generally a must really. So we, we, we have had applicants in the past who might not have the level of experience or the volume of experience that we would, we would like. But on occasions, we've actually worked with those applicants. We said, you know, um, perhaps if you were to continue in your current job for another year, defer your uh, application, uh, we can consider you a year's time. And we do have many applicants like that. So, but you know, that's something that we can't compromise on. It's something that you know means that the quality of the ex of the student experience is is high indeed. So that experience is important. Um, on the matter of financing on, and scholarship, we do actually have a number of scholarships available. And um, we have scholarships which are based on excellence. So if you have a, a first class honours degree or, or the equivalent, we would love to receive an application from you. And, um, you know, depending on when we receive that application, obviously, we you know, our scholarship part is so big, but once we start to award scholarships, the, the scholarship fund then diminishes, um, you know, as is, uh, uh, which is obvious really. So the sooner we get these good applicants, the sooner we can actually consider them for any sort of scholarship. So we do award scholarships to students who show excellence either in education, so maybe they have a first class honours degree or equivalent, but also we award scholarships to people who show excellence in industry as well. So if they've got some really fantastic industry experience, experience which has actually shaped the fortunes of their organization. Again, we'd like to hear from them as well. Uh, but in addition, we also have uh, scholarships for female applicants as well. And we're, we're deliberate and proud in this because uh, in a sport like football, um, diversity is often missing and it's missing in a number of areas. Um, sometimes it's missing at the managerial level, so first team coaches and the likes, um, in terms of cultural diversity, racial uh, diversity, but also in terms of management, um, women are extremely underrepresented when it comes to many areas within football, um, and there's no reason why that should that, why that should be the case. Really, yes, um, often the actual game itself is professional men's football, but in terms of managing. There's no reason why female managers or, or, or directors can't be uh, managing in football. So one of the things we do in trying to help change that balance within the football industry is offer scholarships to female applicants as well. So, and right. again, you know, we, we, we are getting good numbers of female applicants. We offer a hundred percent scholarship in some cases, in some cases, a 50% scholarship and, um, in, in some instances, maybe a 30% scholarship. So uh, we have scholarships for excellence and we also have scholarships for um, uh, for our female, for female applicants as well. Um, and another scholarship that we do have actually is um, a Latin American scholarship as well. So we try and encourage um, applicants from that part of the globe as well. So we can actually, again, increase diversity. And that by and large has contributed positively to the the, the nature of the cultural diversity and the international representativeness of, 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 the, of the students on the programme. That's great. Um, 
just uh, to be clear, do applicants do they need uh, to have a bachelor a bachelor's degree for you know to apply for both courses? Do you have exceptions for maybe former athletes or anything like that, or everyone needs to have at least a, a bachelor degree? Um, for the most part, yes, everyone needs a bachelor's degree, but we do um, offer. Uh, for those whose education has been far from the traditional route, so they may have fantastic industry experience uh, and perhaps they hadn't gone to university. So we also welcome applications from those individuals as well. And what we would do in those instances is look um, you know, at their application um, very closely and we'll make a judgment in some instances when we need to speak with the with the applicants we'll arrange an interview and speak with them in the past we've we've maybe asked them to engage in a piece of work to again try and reach a judgment about the the caliber of the student to, or, or of the applicant that we're, we're we're looking at so yeah we we do welcome applications from those who may not have gone to university and therefore may not hold a a bachelor's degree or, or a postgraduate degree so we're we're we just, our ambition really is to make sure that we get applicants who are, who show the, the right caliber and are likely to succeed uh, when they do the course. Great. Uh, before we go to the next questions, by the way, people, uh, your friends watching there, if you have questions, uh, you know, just uh, write them in the comments. We'll get to them. We do have a few others here. Uh, just want to say that uh, Malu says that she loves my new glasses. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jaime says um, hello here from Lausanne. Uh, Laura, well, I should say Laura because she's, she's in, in, in Brazil, uh, says hi as well. Yashpal is saying hi from Coventry, I suppose, in the University of Coventry, which, by the way, will also be at the Education Virtual Expo with us next week. And we also have uh, Wisdom Banda from Zambia. Oh, great, excellent. It's a fantastic mix of, uh, of audience, really, really great. Yeah, I have that feeling every week. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, uh, I guess this is what it's about, really. It's, um, you know, programs like, like ours and, and similar programs, you know, it's about, you know, that, that global place really that you know students students applicants are, are, are global citizens really so they may originate from one part of the globe study in another part work in a different part and I think it, it's it's just fantastic to see really in fact one of the one of the things that I am always astounded by is the mix of international students we have in our program and for many of them English is not their first language. But they choose to study a postgraduate qualification, an MBA in English. And I'm just really uh, astounded by that and, and I'm in awe of them. So that, that's testimony to, to, to the caliber of students they are. Yeah, that's great. And here, Life also saying hi from Zimbabwe. So oh, hello. Uh, tell us more then about uh, the student's life. Uh, in, in Liverpool, so what it's like. So if they get to go there. Let's assume that uh, they will be able to move around uh, from September or October onwards. Uh, this lockdown will diminish and things hopefully will start to get normal. Tell us a little uh, about what the student's life is like there. Well, the University of Liverpool and Liverpool, are, are, it's just fantastic really, you know, it's, um, you know, um, when you talk about the cultural epicenters in the UK, you'd obviously might talk about London, but equally you will talk about Liverpool as well, really. You know, um, the I mean, Liverpool obviously was the European capital of culture a few years ago. Um, so, you know, when it comes to music, sport, you know, Liverpool is just synonymous with, with, with culture in that regard. So as a student on the FIMBA programme located on, on campus in Liverpool, you know, immediately you're immersed in that, really. So there's plenty of football and other sports to engage in if you want to, if you want to spectate. Uh, music scene is very buoyant. 
Um, you know, if you want to participate in sports as well, there's plenty happening on campus as well. So it's a it's a brilliant balance between the pursuit of of academia and and you know the pursuit of culture and leisure as well. So typically, you know, what one of the wonderful things during the course of a, a week on Fimba is, you know, often the Monday will start with uh, football economics, you know, Wednesday with a few other things as well, Tuesday and Thursday. By the time we get to Friday, a couple of guest speakers, uh, you know, the guest speaker wouldn't just give a presentation, but the students will also have the opportunity to, to have a lunch and chat informally with the guest speaker. And in many instances, the guest speaker will join the students and then go to the local campus bar and, and have a relaxing chat with them. And then the weekends, the students will, you know, have a game of football. So we often have a, a FIMBA football, campus football team as well, um, who do performances are mixed, let's say. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's enjoyable. And in fact, um, sometimes the, the football team actually go on the road as well. So they go to other universities and play against their teams as well. So it, it's a fantastic, um, you know, opportunity to... to uh, to, to live student days again. So, but also at the same time, study hard as well. So it's a great balance as well. So as I said, you know, Liverpool culture, sport, music is, is fantastic as well. And the other be added benefits of the, um, the, uh, the MBA program is that because FIMBA is, a, is a, a part of an MBA suite. So obviously we talked about horse racing um, you know, these students also get to network with those other groups of people as well. So they get to learn and socialize with a, a wide franchise of, of students. So it, it's, it's fantastic, really. So it's great. So campus life is wonderful. Uh, and uh, students really do enjoy not just campus, but also enjoy the city as well, which is fantastic. Great. Um, you, you mentioned, um, you know, the guest lectures that normally come to to the to the course and also a few of your uh, field trips um, tell us a little bit more about the, the the field trips normally in a normal year where where do you go um yeah you, you mentioned traveling as well abroad oh yeah it's in fact you know um you know all, all of these are very important elements to what, what makes the FIMBA program what it is so specifically about field trips, you know, we we obviously, you know, take in our two local clubs, so uh, Liverpool Football Club and Everton Football Club, um, and we get to see the operations there. So these, these are behind the scenes, speaking with the executives at the football club. But also our field trips also take us to other major clubs as well, the likes of Manchester City. Uh, the students regularly visit uh, Celtic uh, in Scotland as well. Um, we we are very mindful that football isn't just about the super clubs. So students also go to some of the clubs as well, Tramia Rovers, MK Dons is another one. Um, and also a regular feature in our uh, field trip calendar uh, before COVID uh, paused, paused things is uh, our annual trip to, to UEFA. Uh, who are absolutely brilliant. It's just absolutely wonderful. And the the quality of the visit, the educational experience is, is excellent, really. Um, the students also go to, um, we've been to FIFA. And we're also looking at organising other other trips as well. Uh, we've had some invitations from, from uh, organisations in Spain as well. So, in fact, the biggest challenge we have, really, is trying to fit them within the, within the, in the calendar, really. That's, that's the biggest challenge we have, really. So, uh, but, you know, we, the students really do enjoy and benefit from a really wide array of field trips, meeting, you know, fantastic executives who are, you know, just superbly generous in, in giving up their time and expertise and really does complement not, you know, it complements the classroom exercises which the students engage in because they can see a lot of what they're learning also happening in industry as well. Great, Tunde, thank you for that. A shout out to Joe McGrath in uh, Philadelphia, and uh, the US. Hello, um, Jay. He's enjoying your, your presentation uh, oh, here. Thank thanks, Joe. And um, I have one more, uh, Tunde. So, and we're getting 
close to the one hour mark. So for anyone that uh, might still have one or two questions, this is your last chance. Uh, so before we go, I would like to know about uh, is internships. Are internships part of the program? Is that something that they need to do before they graduate? Or do you offer uh, any type of support for them to do some internships in, in uh, yeah, with football clubs or, or sports companies? No, in fact, um, the, the word internship is a little, it can be a bit misguiding in, in terms of what we do and how we go about it. So um, we, we don't offer internships, not in the traditional sense anyway. Uh, what we do offer instead is the opportunity for students to actually embark on a work-based project. So the students, with our help or maybe as a result of um, the industry connections that we have, uh, will work with an organisation uh, for a period of three months, maybe starting around April, uh, May, maybe sometimes June. So they work through the summer months with that organisation. Now, the student and the organisation will jointly uh, agree on a set of terms of references, uh, and those terms of references will then guide the actual project itself. In some instances, there might be a requirement for the student to actually uh, work at the organization's um, headquarters or offices. In, in many instances, um, um, the student might just work away and go to the organization for a number of prearranged uh, regular visits. So that's what we do by way of a project rather than an internship. I think often when we use the term internship, people have this notion about going into the office every day working on something so we we don't do that in that sense really um so what we do is uh, organize uh, and uh, for the students to work on work-based projects where you know the, the the parameters of that project are agreed with the organization and right. the outcome of that project is a report to the client a report to the university and it's part of the uh, students um uh, credits as well. So I'm thinking of a consultancy type of... Exactly that. It, it, so the students really should think of it as if they were consultants being given a task and a role to perform and they've got a set time to do that. Great. So Tunde, I think this has been excellent, um, very elucidating and great information. I know that uh, you'll be I mean, there for three days with, with your team at the um, Educational Visual Expo next week. So people that uh, watched here now or watching the replay uh, and still want to have, um, you know, ask more questions or get in touch with you, they'll be able to, to do that. I invite them to do so. If you haven't registered yet, you can just uh, go to the link below and, and do that. It's for free. Um, and I want to really thank you for, for doing this and I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to I mean, meeting you again uh, next week. Nice, no, fantastic. Thank you very much for, for inviting me and it is, it's wonderful to, to have a, a, a nice chat really. You know, it's been an hour but it's flown by rather quickly actually. So uh, It went very fast, fantastic. yes. That's great. So don't, don't go anywhere yet. I just want to leave here a final message to everyone that is uh, watching. It is, again, to remind you that uh, the Education Virtual Expo is coming up. It's uh, next week from the 6th to the 8th of April. Free to attend. Uh, the University of Liverpool, Liverpool will be there with another 14 uh, super high-level programs. So suggest that you go and check it out. And yeah, it's uh, been great to be here with you. And next, well, tomorrow uh, we, sorry, I need to change here the, the screens. Yeah. So we have another three programs speaking with us this week. We have the AISTS based here in Lausanne that uh, will be talking with us tomorrow. Uh, the Johann Cruyff Institute on Wednesday and the Jusur Institute, based in Qatar, very linked to the um, organization of the World Cup uh, next year, will also be presenting here this week. So I hope to see you all with us this, all these four days this week and also 
uh, next week at the Education Virtual Expo. Tunde, thanks again. I'm going to say bye bye everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know, hit that like button. It really helps us. If you want to get the notifications for everything that I just said, also click that bell sign. And um, yes, we'll be here tomorrow. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And stay safe, everyone. Have a good time. You too. Bye bye.